In this video, I'm going to show you how to repair a rusted cab corner, B-pillar, inner rocker, and the rear floor panel on a 1971 C10, or any Chevy GMC truck from 67 through 72. Watch it go from this to this. I started the cab corner last night. There's not much that I did to it. I mainly took a bunch of measurements. Let me show what I got done so far. So I took a bunch of measurements just in case something doesn't fit right. Now I think my game plan is I'm gonna cut it below the body line. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out this B pillar. For the next step, I'm gonna take this B pillar section and I'm gonna cut it right across here. So let's see how this fits. Now I scribed a line right here, most likely where this panel is actually gonna be cut. But for right now, I'm gonna cut a little bit below there because I wanna get the cab corner in first before I put this in its final resting place. Since I don't really have anything to work off of here, since this has a lot of play in it, I'm gonna have to get this somewhat mocked up, get the cab corner mocked up, cut out all this garbage, and put new pieces in, and then at that point, I'll be able to figure out how high or how low this is gonna need to go. Having a wide selection of cutting tools really makes the job easy. Wow, now that's a difference. Here's a perfect example how bad these panels are. See that curvature? Guess what doesn't exist on this panel. I got the B pillar cut out, so now I'm going to start on the cab corner. I'm gonna cut it along this line all the way across here. I wanna keep as much of this original lip as I can. As you can tell, the replacement panel is very poorly stamped. The only thing that I have left here is a couple spot welds I gotta drill out. I have two ways to do this. One, I can either ruin my drill bits on super rusty spot welds, or I can put a panel splitter in there and just split this. It doesn't really matter what I do to the other side of this because it's gonna be replaced because it's it's honestly just rust. I mean, it, it should not move that much. Originally, I was gonna use one of these, but I decided to go a pneumatic. Way, Way quicker, quicker and more destructive. Anybody in the market for some rust paper? 99 cents a sheet. Wow, this is so trashed. That really gives you a good perspective on how bad this cab corner is. I got this panel clamped in place, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna scribe it from the back side. I'm gonna cut it on this line to give myself a little bit more of the panel because I don't wanna be in this situation where, you know, I cut it twice and it's still too short. Like I said before, it's all about the tools. So just like every other spot on this panel, I scribed it and I'm gonna leave myself a little bit more to work with. I am getting closer and closer. I took the spot weld cutter out and I drilled out those four spot welds and I'm gonna drill out probably the next eight to 10 spot welds. I wanna use as much of that floor as I can because this floor is trashed. As far as the brace that's underneath this piece that runs along the back side of the floor, I'm gonna buy that section last. So I'm gonna do all my metal work in this corner and in the other corner. And then once this cab is off the frame, at that point, I'll flip it around, I'll draw a spot weld and replace it. Time for the impact. Ah, and a tetanus shot. So since I'm gonna reuse this piece, I'm going to cut it out. Got time to be playing around with that saw. Wow, now that's some rust. Like I said, it's all about tools. I'm sure this panel's gonna fit awesomely like every other one. So here's a perfect example how bad these replacement panels are. Look at that. So if I blindly just cut along this line, how am I gonna recreate that? I mean, of course there's ways to do it, but it's just unnecessary work. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut it here 
and once again, try to leave the original body lines. This doesn't even exist on the replacement panel. So I would say today's been a pretty successful day. I got a lot of stuff done. I got the cab corner cut out, I got the B pillar cut out, and I got the whole floor cut out. So the way I tackled this piece is I trimmed it one side at a time. I trimmed this side and this side, and it's still overlapping here. I got these to fit pretty flush. And now I'm gonna remove the access here and on this side. So this piece is completely fitted. There's a slight difference here. So I might have to split this panel here and just kind of push it over a little bit to straighten it out. All the holes in here are completely off. I don't know what that's all about. This thing's sitting exactly where it should be. So this piece is in. The next piece I'm gonna work on is the cab corner and then we'll get this piece in there. The way I'm going to fit this cab corner, I have my replacement panel underneath and I have my crappy, rusty cab corner on top. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out my cutoff wheel and I'm just gonna basically cruise along that line all the way through. So in the last clip, you saw me cut up the cab corner using the old cab corner as a template. Now that worked really well, but a couple minutes ago, I just told you guys to work one side at a time. And what didn't I do? I didn't take my own advice because if I would have, I wouldn't have that gigantic gaping hole right there. So next time for you guys and myself, make sure you cut one side at a time. All right, well, since we got that awkwardness out of the way, let's move on to the B pillar. I don't know, that might be the sweet spot. So I'm just gonna keep massaging and I'll bring you guys back once this is actually nice and fitted. So lately I've been messing around with getting this cab corner to fit a little bit better the last couple days, kind of on and off. It's fitting pretty decent. I'm pretty happy with it. I fixed my stupidity issue here and had to add a little bit of metal there but for the most part, it's fitting pretty nicely. There's one other thing you're gonna wanna do when you're fitting this panel, is take a straight edge and just make sure that there is no huge gaps. Now there is a gap there, but the only reason is, is because I have it clamped down right here. So I will tweak that before I weld it. As far as fitting this panel, I didn't really have to do too much to it. The only thing I had to do is I end up putting a cut right here. What that let me do was move this a little bit further back and this was kind of fitting poorly in the beginning so it let me get this to sit exactly where it needs to be as far as all these holes most of them are unnecessary this piece is scribed i'm going to cut along that line and i'm going to leave myself a little bit more here why because these holes and all these other holes were drilled to precision specs by who knows a machine that's against humans this is nice man things are coming together Stuff's getting done. So yeah, let's shred some metal. I got this piece cut up, so now I'm going to scribe the area where I'm gonna be cutting. No matter how many times I use that tool, I always resort back to this guy. The death wheel. Well, it definitely helps taking measurements. So it's 35 and a half inches from the center of that bolt to the center of that bolt, which would be the center of that hole. So yeah, since I'm not gonna have to worry about these holes because they line up exactly where they should be, I'm just gonna cut off that section where it's scribed. I'm slowly removing a little bit here, a little bit there. This thing's fitting pretty nice so far. So this side's basically done and I described this area, so I'm gonna Hack this away, working one side at a time, and once this is fitting, I'll work on that. I totally meant to do that. So this side's fitted, this side's fitted. All I have left is trimming this area down. Hey look, the cab corner's done. Yeah, just kidding. I still have to weld it in. This is what I got cut up at this point. 
no matter how much of a pain it is, make sure you clean your metal from both sides. Right, let's get this thing in place. It looks like it's exactly where it needs to be. Looks can be deceiving though. Another important thing is to measure all these lines also. So this is what I got done so far. I got this panel tacked in, and now I'm going to start by prepping the rear floor section. I'm going to fill in this hole and this hole, which was originally for the in-cab gas tank. These two holes, which I have no idea what they're for, and I got to take care of this piece. So I'm going to sandblast this piece, drill a couple holes into it, paint it, get it ready to weld back into this spot right there. And going back to what I was talking about earlier, here's a perfect example. This panel fits okay. This floor actually needs to go up a little bit. Look at that. This is deeper in, so if I push this out, this is just going to be a huge mess to, to have to fix. Because I'm going to have to split this panel in so many different ways. So I made these little dimes to fill in these holes that I just don't need anymore. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to weld these up. I got four to weld up here. Then we're going to try to figure out how we're going to get to this. I don't call them adult puzzles for nothing. So here is an issue that I just ran into. And it's not something I'm going to have to deal with now, but... I plan on removing this piece. Once the entire floor is done, I'm gonna put the truck on its back and I'll have access to this and I'll pull this piece off. Well, here's the problem. If I try to remove this piece, this floor brace welds to the back cab support and to the bottom. The problem with that is I'm not gonna be able to drop this piece because this is gonna be interfering. So I guess the easiest thing to do would just be to cut this in half. And when I get to that point, I can drop this whole piece out and either I can weld this back in or maybe I'll just end up replacing the entire piece. I mean, it is what it is. You're going to run into stuff like this. There's not really a instruction booklet that tells you exactly how to redo these trucks. Well, I mean, there is. And there's a playlist right here. Those four holes are all welded up. I got a little trimming to do here. You might be asking yourself why. Why did you take measurements over here? That cab support underneath here, I'm probably going to hack away a good portion of it to gain access to this. Because in the long run, it's going to be replaced anyways. It's just something you got to do. Got to plan ahead sometimes. So this is here. So this ends up in the right spot. I cut out a section of this floor support so I could actually get a dolly behind here because when I split these panels I kind of distorted it a little bit now I've worked this area already plus this is going to give me awesome access to be able to put a tool in there to be able to clean all that stuff up now the only problem that I see here is I don't have three hands because there's going to be no way for me to hold this and jump to the other side and hammer it on this side. I got a solution for that. Don't have hands that are long enough to reach this spot. I guess I'm screwed, what can I do? Introducing the Dolly Extender 3049, easy payments of 999. Turn an impossible job into a possible job. Just look at it. Best way to gain an extra arm besides dipping your whole body in radioactive waste. 